good morning Suzuki community and today it's not for the Samurais it's going to be talking to the sidekick and geo tracker people this is the Lily build that we're doing for the little girl that's recovering from cancer I already mentioned that that operation went really well and it's treatable so Logan uh, her daddy owns this car I haven't met the whole family yet but we will at the reveal today what we're going to be doing is skid plates from Sean Davini at aftermarket4x4.com. Now, we're not going to put the link in. We're just going to talk about Sean and, and number one, I sell his plates. But uh, aftermarket4x4.com, I don't think that website's worked for a while, but Sean's an older company than I am. Smart boy, love him to death. He's a great guy. You all know him on the East Coast for sure. He's an old school uh, Suzuki person. Anyways, uh, he's got the plates for us here to do for the Logan Lily. It's going to be a front skid plate install and a rear skid plate install on the same video. But before I go any further, I would like to thank you for subscribing. I'd like to ask you to subscribe. And I want to say thank you to all you guys that are sharing the videos because I see it on Facebook, in different Suzuki clubs, and we're growing and we appreciate that because it helps us do more of these types of videos. And so let's go ahead and get started with the front skid plate. Now this is a two-door. And every tracker or every side kicked four door every year, Sean's got them pretty much covered for the front skid plate and the rear gas tank skid plate. Now, me personally, I'm not that big of a skid plate person, especially around the center, because I've been in, uh, on the trails a lot. We broke down vehicles, and when we we're wedged on the rocks, trying to get that center skid plate off to get around the TKs or a drive shaft is a real issue. But I am a big fan of front skids and rear skids for these kinds of cars. Now this particular one it has AC so first thing we're going to do is just get this out of my way. I don't need to but I'm going to take off the windshield for the and it's a wind shield in that it blows the wind up into the uh, condenser for the AC. So we'll, you see how easy that comes out to bolts. We'll put that back in a minute. Now, Sean's going to come with instructions on his uh, skid plates. He's going to give you the hardware. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some blue Loctite to all four of these bolts. And the way that the instructions say it is to mount it on the horn. Now, the horn, to some of you, might not know what that is, these are the horns right here off the frame. And there's a hole right here that's threaded, and there's a hole right here that's threaded. Now what Sean says is instructions is you go ahead and get these front ones in and so we're going to go ahead and get them in. We're going to start on this side here, put that up on the horn, and what he wants you to do is get all four of them in. You might need to have one of the kids come out or the lovely wife or girlfriend and help you hold this up. I just happen to have a little robot here to help me. That was tough. My legs are sore from snowboarding. So what we want to do is we want to get all four bolts started before we tighten them up. These are 8 millimeter by 125. Now what I've done is I've already tapped all four of these holes so I'm not going to have any issues with dirt or anything like that. Now once I get these two in, then I'm going to go in the back and get those back two in and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten up all these bolts. The cross member is already threaded and so are the horns. You see how it hangs like that right there? So now I can actually move it left and right a little bit and slide it around to get these back bolts in. Alright, wow that was easy. Okay. This is kind of a two-part video, so we're going to get right on the back. Obviously, I'm going to tighten these bolts up, but there you go. Nice skid plate. Protect that aluminum front carrier. So let's get on to part two of this video. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're on part two of this with Lily's Cancer Bill. And so I want to show you a little trick when you're doing the rear skid plate. you got to take off the plate, and that means the tank's going to come off. So what you're going to do is take a clamp, and you're going to take a plate like this. And you just get in there, right on that welded edge, and then you can hold up the uh, the gas tank. Oh, look who it is. Hey, Jesse, come over here. Hey, everybody, it's Jesse White. You remember him? He used to work for me. How's things going for you, Jesse? Doing good. Real good. Say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. All right, man. Get out of my video. <laughs> 
Hey, it's good to see you, Ben. Good to see you, too. All right, so basically what I do is I just clamp this plate right here, and what this is going to allow me to do is not worry about the gas tank falling. Let's see how that works out. All right, I found my tools. or what gas tank stays there it's pretty easy to figure out which way it goes because of the curved corner in the back but the bolts are closer in the front of the gas tank and farther out in the back videos thank you go wheel and be safe have fun there'll be a link to these skid plates for all the different generation cars from sj410s all the way up to 2004 grand vitars thank you very much for watching the videos and uh don't forget about lily's gofundme page i'd like the suzuki community to help her out thank you very much thanks for watching goodbye